Richard Spencer AP The University of Florida has been working with local law enforcement to develop a disaster plan ahead of Richard Spencer's arrival on campus this week, complete with escape routes, mental health counseling, and a temporary ban on vehicles. We are not going to allow our community to be victimized, Sergeant. Chris Sims, spokesman for the Alachua County Sheriff's Office, told The Post on Tuesday night. We have seen the recent events in Charlottesville, Virginia, and other places where vehicles were used as weapons, he said. We want to do our very best to protect those First Amendment rights, but at the same time, we want to secure the safety of people at the venue. Spencer, 39, is scheduled to speak at UF on Thursday. Fearing that violence could break out, Florida Gov. Rick Scott declared a state of emergency Monday, saying the threat was imminent. As a result, police officials have been working with the Division of Emergency Management to coordinate a plan of action ahead of Spencer's speech. The outspoken white nationalist has become infamous for his speaking engagements, with many dubbing his words hate speech. He helped organize the deadly Unite the Right rallies in Charlottesville and has become a leader of the alt-right movement. To counteract the possibility of violence, authorities and university officials have decided to close several roads on campus Thursday, while also banning cars and bicycles in certain areas surrounding Spencer's speaking venue. Out of the abundance of caution, we must suspend traffic, Sims said. Should things go outside the scope of the plan, now we have vehicles that can potentially be used as weapons. According to the Washington Post, UF officials will also be suspending bus routes and sealing off parking lots to avoid any possibility of someone driving into a crowd. Bring a good pair of walking shoes, advised Alachua County Sheriff Sadie Darnell. Spencer will be forced to give his speech in an isolated corner on Florida's Gainesville campus, located two and a half miles from the center of the university and almost all of its classrooms, the WP reports. Nearby buildings will be shut down as a precaution and access to the Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, where Spencer will be speaking, will be limited. In addition, mental health counseling is being offered on campus this week, and students and employees will be allowed to skip class Thursday if they want to. We've had the luxury of time to prepare, Darnell said. The challenge is that we don't know what we may be facing. Sims told The Post that authorities and university officials will relay information to each other on the day of Spencer's speech using one unified communications protocol. This is to ensure that the message is delivered adequately on all channels, Sims said. We must remember, we are dealing with both federal, state and local law enforcement agencies. Richard Spencer clashes with Virginia State Police at the rally in Charlottesville. Getty images in order to deal with the possibility that mass numbers of people will be arrested, police officials have chosen to suspend jail visitation and criminal registration Friday, and are weighing whether to do so on Thursday as well. Should we experience the civil unrest part of this, which again, has occurred across our nation, after very similar, speeches, we are going to take enforcement action, Sims explained. Should that mean, multiple arrests are made, we want to be prepared for what that means for our county's jail and what that means for staffing the influx that it would cause. To the jail means certain things such as jail visitation and criminal registration need to be suspended to ensure we have an all-hand Sundick approach. Speaking to the Washington Post on Tuesday, Spencer said he felt the preparations were overboard. He claimed that if violence is shown, it won't be coming from white nationalists. We don't want any of our people to be the one to throw the first punch, Spencer said. We don't want them to do anything to harm our movement. Instead of worrying about him and his supporters, Spencer said cops should be watching out for anti-fascist protesters, or Antifa. We can't stoop down to their level, he said. In response, Sims insisted that local law enforcement would be busting people on both sides, should they break the law. We are not creating a plan solely based around Mr. Spencer, he said. We are creating a plan based around what we have already seen nationwide with very similar events involving very similar speeches and the civil unrest that has occurred across all avenues. This is all for him. Sims added, the University of Florida is going to honor the First Amendment, but it is our duty to protect the community. So when you come into Alachua County, you have now become part of our community. It's our duty to ensure you are safe and secure. In this case, our primary concern is the safety of all involved. Scott's executive order, which declared the state of emergency, also places the Florida National Guard on standby, in the event of something happening that warrants their arrival. Sims told the Post that while they expect this not to happen, deploying troops is not out of the question. We hope that the National Guard continues to be an out-of-sight, out-of-mind entity, however, they are there if we need them, he said. 
but ultimately, the National Guard is not part of our immediate response protocol. They're not gonna be on the front lines. The command officials have been in the planning stages since the beginning, so they are very aware of the plan and what has occurred up to this point. But again, we are not using them as an immediate response protocol.